Welcome back to Smoky Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. Today I'm going to be doing brisket burn ins for you. We're going to get started right after this. Here is our brisket, beautiful prime brisket, weighs in at 12.73 pounds, almost a 13 pound brisket. This came from Matador Prime Steak Company. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the marbling on this. So what I'm getting ready to do is remove the cryovac. I will be painstakingly removing the point from the flat. The point is what we're using today on the burnt ends. Once we get this on a cooker, I'm going to be coming back in here and shooting more footage for next weekend's video, and that's going to be pastrami. We're going to take this flat, we're going to create a brine, and we're doing pastrami. That should come up, like I said, uh, week after next, so stay tuned for that as well. I'll be right back, and we're going to go ahead and start this separation. All right, this is the point in. And right under that is a flat that runs right under the point from one end slap to the other. This point is usually humped up as you see here and it usually just feathers out to much of nothing right in this area. First thing I do is find my line to where I know that I'm cutting in the right spot. I'm going to trim off basically almost all this fat and you'll see why here in a moment. This is prime, plenty of fat in the meat so we really don't need this fat cap on here. I'd rather have a really good bark from the rub on both ends. So I'm going to start by just trimming this fat down. Once you get into meat you know you've went far enough. You don't want to get into your meat. You just want to simply trim all your fat. Tell you what, I'm going to get a better knife to do this with. But why I do have this knife, what I want to do to where you can really see what you're doing before I remove much more of this fat is you want to take and cut this gray end off of this brisket. And by the way, don't throw this fat away. I'll take and I'll take all this fat and I'm gonna put it in a, a uh, vacuum bag and I will vacuum back that and I'm gonna put it in a freezer. Anytime you're doing burgers, you can mix that fat in with your lean meat. All right, so I got a smaller knife here. This is more appropriate for removing the fat on the top here. I'm not gonna remove the fat or very little fat from the flat section just mainly on this point. It's really not needed. All right, so as I said earlier, I trimmed down the side to where I could kind of see where my line was and I traced it with my knife. The end of the flat is here. This is the point. And basically all I'm doing is I'm trying to stay in the fat. And as you can see, I made a few mistakes. It's no big deal because all this is gonna come off this point anyway. I'm trying to leave at least a quarter of an inch on the flat itself. We'll see how that plays out. So I'm just going to take and remove the rest of this point. And um, this is basically how you do it. I'm by no means an expert at this, but as they say, practice makes perfect. All right, I got it done. Here is the point, here is the flat. And if you notice right here, I knocked this down. This naturally has a hump on it. And so I took a knife and I just worked it and kind of filleted it to where it lays open to where you got all the same thickness to where it cooks evenly. 
All right, I'm going to be putting a rub on uh, this one here shortly. This one's going to be wrapped in foil and go back into the refrigerator until I can get this brine put together. But we're going to put this on a pit first. Had a really deep, fat pocket here. I've dug as deep as I want to go with it. So anyway, there you go. Let me flip this one over. Look at the marbling, even in this fat. Man, this is a nice brisket. It had a lot of fat. I've got a lot over here to grind with burgers. Now, I try to leave around a quarter to an eighth of an inch. You've got a few bare spots, but it's going to be fine. Like I said, this is going to be pastrami coming up next week. All right, I'm going to uh, bring you back here in just a few minutes. We're getting ready to switch, see which seasonings I want to use on the burn ends. We are ready for some rub. What I've done is I took a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, and I've rubbed both sides of this meat to get it wet, to give this seasoning something to bind to. I'm using a salt, pepper, and garlic Salt, pepper, and garlic as a base. Nothing real heavy. Now I'm going on with Killer Hogs Hot Barbecue Rub. Really like this rub. Flip it over, do the same thing. We are ready for the pit. I've got a brand new pit I want to show you. I'm going to meet you outside momentarily. Take a look at my new grill. This is a Kamado made by Slow and Sear, s, s There's their logo right here. And man, I have just been stoked ever since I got this. Cannot wait to fire it up. This thing is heavy duty ceramics. It's top of the line ceramics. The ceramics is exactly what they use in your big green eggs and some of your more popular Kamados. Exact same ceramics, but only thicker. And uh, let me explain a little bit the beauty of it. It's slow and sear installed already. There's your spin grate. There's your slow and sear, your water trough. There's your dripping griddle. And so you know this rack right here, you can remove that if you're going to use it as a dripping griddle. And if you want to cook up here, you can uh, add this grate to put your meat right onto the grate to where it's not just sitting in the pan. That's something I haven't seen yet. It also has an expansion rack that goes on top of this rack, which expands your cooking area. It's a half moon like this, so you have all this area and half of that again. Now the beauty of the slow ones here in a Kamado would have to be true two zone cooking you got your fire you got your water trough and then you got your meat no heat's coming from underneath like traditional kamados now that said this can be used as a traditional kamado it does come with a fuser slash deflector plate it's got a ash grate that goes into the bottom just like a normal kamado i have it removed right now because it's not needed your slow and sear is your ash grate and the ash is going to just fall to the bottom this in itself is going to give you much better airflow than what you can normally get on a Kamado. Problem with the Kamado, and I've owned three of them, those charcoals burn into little bits and pieces and they start blocking up the holes in your charcoal grate. No problem with this, none whatsoever. This is not a regular size Kamado. You can't find this anywhere else. This is, fits all the 22 and a half inch Weber accessories. So I'm looking forward to it. By the way, all stainless steel. It's uh, the best of two worlds, slow and sear meets Kamado. I'm stoked. We're going to fire it up here momentarily. Hey, you can't have a new grill without some new charcoal, right? I've never used this. This is Fogo. I've heard some really good things about it. This is their premium lump charcoal. They also have a super premium with some really big chunks. I hear the burn times are very long on this. We're going to give it a try for the first time, and it's going to help us get this grill all dirty. All right, my pit temperature is already up to 243. We're shooting somewhere between 225 and 250. I just readjusted that bottom vent and I've got it 
maybe a half inch open. I've got the top vent just barely cracked, about an eighth of an inch. We're going to try to dial it in at that temperature. And, uh, yep, 243. It's kind of bottomed out right there. So I'm going to go ahead and place this brisket point on here. And we're going to start cooking. And there we go. All right, I'll bring you back a little later, maybe an hour, hour and a half. We'll just take a look at it. We got a long way to go, though. Okay. All right, we've been going probably around three hours. And uh, according to my Maverick XR50, I'm at 167 internal, and I'm holding around 255, 256 on the great temp. And that's been riding like that real, real good. So let's take a look at this and see what we're looking like. Oh yeah, we're starting to get a really nice color on that. And by the way, I'm using hickory wood here, if you was wondering. And as this is shrinking, you know, it's, it's like getting thicker, real similar to like beef ribs where they pull up on the bone. You start off with a thinner rib, but by the time it's all said and done, it's like that thick because it does this number. And that's what's happening uh, with these burn ends. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up about another 30 degrees internal temp to about 195. Then at that point, I'm going to remove these. Let me close this lid. I'm going to remove these, and we're going to cube them up, and we're going to take it from there, and I'll show you then what I'm going to do. We'll be back. All right, I'm up to 195 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. We're going to put it in this pan. I'm going to meet you inside, and we're going to take it to the next level. All right, so here we go. This is the point on this brisket, and I'm going to take a knife, and we're just going to cut this into cubes. It's already starting to feel pretty, pretty tender. Now, I don't expect this to shrink down much more than what we've got here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to size. Tell you what, that feels almost tender enough to eat as is, but we're going to let it go a little bit more. All right, we're going to leave that as is. Let's take our pan. Hey, I've seen that. All right, we're going to put our burn ends into our pan. Hey, I've seen that, doggone. We're not gonna have none left. It's not as tender as what it's gonna be, so y'all just hang on. Got snitchers everywhere, man. Snitching up my burn ends. <laughs> Take it, brother. We homer. I hear you. I gotta go to work. Well, what do you think about the flavor so far? It's fixing, mm -hmm. it's fixing to get a lot better. Getting ready to sauce these up. I've got cock and bull B and B. That stands for brown sugar and bourbon. There you go. Can you see that in the frame? Looking good? All right. These burn ends are fixing to get real happy. I'm just gonna toss them around, get a good coating. Now these are going back on a pit and they're gonna cook for at least another hour, maybe an hour and a half. And these are going to be just melt in your mouth, succulent, tender when they come out. This sauce smells really good. It's been just a little over an hour since I put these burn ends in the pan and back into the cooker. Let's take a look at them. Ooh, they got some really nice color. We're going to do a little probe test here. I'm not going after temperature, just probing. Oh, yeah. Super tender. All right, I'm going to remove this. We're going to set it off to the side. And we're just going to let them cool off just a little bit to where I can give you a taste test. I do want to say one thing while I got you here. This uh, 
SNS Kamado has done beautiful. I flipped it earlier thinking I wasn't getting any color on the bottom because of the way this works, but I was getting plenty of color under it. And I don't totally understand that yet because the heat is not coming from the bottom. It's actually coming from the top. But I did, in fact, when I flipped it, I had as much color on the bottom as I did the top. So that's kind of blowing me away. Maybe it's something to do with the uh, dripping griddle reflecting back. I have no idea. But I do know that this worked outstanding. It did, uh, as Slow and Sear always does, it did a really good job. And like I said earlier, you could always set this up as a standard or a regular type Kamado, have your heat up under the bottom. But what I like about this, now you have an ultimate sear zone on a Kamado cooker, which was something that wasn't possible in the past. In the past, your charcoal's way here in the bottom and you're trying to sear a steak, it didn't do too good. Now you got the best of both worlds, like I said. So let me let this cool off. I'll give you a taste test here momentarily. All right, so here we go. Let's do a taste test. I'm gonna pick this one right here. Got a nice burnt color, burnt ends, but it's not burnt, people. Mmm. Really love that sauce. That is that black sugar and bourbon sauce. Fantastic on these burnt ends. Didn't make a lot, and I've got one, two, three, four, four people looking at me. There's some more in here, so we're gonna have to divide this sparingly. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out next week's video, Pastrami. Until next time, smoke your ribs.